Almost. So, all right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, to solve this problem, uh, there's a couple ways you know we can kind of go about it. The first thing that you can do is you can always look at you know transferring my uh, cotangent, cotangent squared by using my Pythagorean identities. And like I said, you can try it and see where you get. Another way you can also look at this is trying to get whatever's off your bottom. Because you notice here's a fraction, and here's you know two terms subtracted by each other. So I also need to somehow get rid of my fraction, right? Because when I'm looking for um, when I have this, actually, let's go and let's go and write cotangent squared. Since I know cotangent squared is going to give me uh, cosecant squared minus one, right? So I'd write cosecant squared minus one of x, cosecant squared of x equals cosecant of x minus sine of x. Right? Everybody see what I did? Sam, see this? Yeah. Now, all I did is, I know that cotangent equals that, right? Now, the next thing I can do, guys, is remember when you have a number that's being divided into them, you can divide your cosecant into both of your terms. So I could rewrite this as cosecant squared of x divided by cosecant of x minus 1 over cosecant squared of x. Right? All I did was I split up my fraction. Well, Cosecant squared divided by of x divided by cosecant cancels out to just give me cosecant squared of x minus what's the reciprocal of one over or what's the reciprocal of uh, your one over your cosecant sine. of x? It's gonna be your sine of x. Oh, that's good. Guess it? No. Why did you do the reciprocal? I'm sorry? Why did you do the reciprocal? Because remember I wanted to get to it to be sine. So that's why I took 1 over cosecant to get it to sign. Because remember, we're trying to verify the identity. We're trying to verify the left side is going to you know, equal our right side. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, never mind. 